very clearly, we condemn all bombing, including Russian bombing, and that we always have done, and uh, we will continue to do so. We've also called for and supported a UN investigation into war crimes that may well have been committed in Syria. The UN Human Rights Council should investigate all of what's gone on there, and there has to be a resumption of the Geneva peace process and the talks there. There has to be an end to the bombing, a ceasefire, and aid given rapidly to the people of Aleppo and indeed other parts of Syria that are starving and suffering at the present time, as well as those being supported in the refugee camps. Those tens of thousands of people that are trying to survive in refugee camps in Turkey, in Greece, in other places, deserve our humanitarian support, deserve to be given a place of security and safety, but it's also our responsibility to bring about an end to the war and a peace process in Syria. It simply must happen. It cannot be like we just allow this war to carry on and all the, um, all the horrors and injustice that go with it. And so we make that absolutely clear. On the um, other point about Boris Johnson, um, Boris Johnson is not somebody we spend a great deal of time agreeing with most of, on most <laughs> occasions, as you probably gathered. But it's interesting what he said and the way he said it and why he said it, and I agree with the way Emily has analysed it. Because uh, if we are serious about uh, bringing about peace in any conflict, be it Syria, be it Yemen, many other conflicts, then you have to ask, what are the driving forces and the motive, motoring of those things? One of them is, of course, money. Another is often resources. Another is arms sales and the ready supply of weapons. ISIL didn't get their money from nowhere, didn't get their arms from nowhere, didn't get their support from nowhere. It came from somebody who has no doubt made a great deal of money out of it. 21 million people at risk in Yemen. It's a vast number. It's had less attention than other conflicts around the world, and we are still supplying arms to Saudi Arabia. And indeed, this is my concern as to what the Prime Minister was doing in her meetings with the Saudi Arabian government, but also with the Bahrain government, where there has been the consistent and persistent um, imprisonment and uh, denial of freedoms of de democratic activists and human rights activists in Bahrain. Where we can make a difference, we should do so. And if halting arms, supplies and sales makes a difference, then let's do it. Because it's surely our contribution to bring about the kind of democratic, peaceful society that we want for ourselves and we want for everybody else where we can make a difference to help them achieve it. And, uh, on your question on the, on the by-election, I thank our candidates, uh, Jim Clark in uh, Sleaford and North Highcombe and Christian Warmer in Richmond for the work they did and the campaigning they did. Obviously, the results could, and I would have wanted them to have been much better. Everybody says that. But the reality is there was a squeeze going on in Richmond and there was a, um, a loss of most people's uh, support in the Sleaford by-election. And I, I thank Jim for his work. As we go through the Christmas period and the New Year period, I think the effects of the autumn statement will begin to unravel. The admission by the government that six years of cuts, six years of austerity, has damaged local government services, closed libraries, swimming pools, underfunded schools, underfunded social care, and in five years' time, wages will be even lower than they are now because of the economic strategy they're adopting. This is a time to invest in a growing economy, invest in the hopes and ambitions of our young people, to work, to get good jobs, to develop our economy. That surely is the right way forward. Not any more of this arid strategy of cutting and cutting and cutting. You don't cut your way to prosperity, you invest your way to prosperity. And that's